Hey everyone, my name is Jesse, and I own a 3D printed store in Hamilton, Ontario. It goes by the name of Print and Play. It has tons of things to do and stuff to buy, and great people. That's Hannah. Best of all, we have monorails, and this is Martin's monorail. It was designed by someone named Martin. And it's not just enough to have one monorail, you have to have a night train too for the front window display. So we built a second one to put in the window, but the problem was that it looked kind of stupid on the ground. So we built an elevated rail that runs between a couple of giant illuminated buildings, and this was super awesome and cute, but the 18650 battery only lasts about one day with continuous discharge. We can run conductive copper tape along the left and right side of the track to carry 5 volt positive current and ground respectively, and then just simply wire a couple of conduction points below the battery car to feed straight into the USB-C port, and the spare car can be used for some advertising space because this store is getting pretty expensive. I got the advertising car set up and installed the conductors below the battery car to make contact with the electrified tracks. The power feeds up from the mud flaps into the USB charger, then into a controller with overcharge protection. It doesn't make constant connection with the tracks, but touches it sporadically enough to trickle charge the battery. This worked great, but in actuality only gained an extra day of battery life. Back to the drawing board. This time, to mitigate the inefficiency of a single loose point of contact for the battery to charge off of, I'm going to add two more sources of power injection. Instead of mud flaps, we're going to create contact points that drag above the bearings that hold the cars on the tracks, as well as dangle some wire behind to catch any other loose potential contact points with the copper tape. Now, there's three chances to catch that 5 volt current instead of just one. So I wired it all up with a few 5 volt LED strips along the circuit to demonstrate if the current is flowing through the power injection points, which it certainly does more often. The battery controller appears to be charging across about 80% of the track's length, and the copper tape is making much stronger connection with the conduction points and dragging wires under the charging cars, sending 5 volts up the line to the battery which feeds the motor. I guess the only thing to do now is pretty up the charging cars so they aren't just dangling wires and loose LEDs. I printed off a few of Zach Friedman's Gift to the World Gridfinity boxes, which is what this monorail was actually formatted for, and drilled some holes to accommodate the power lines. Sorry to bastardize your design, Zach. I was just in a rush to get this done before meeting with a local charity. I fitted everything into place, cut the wires to fit into the Gridfinity train cars, which were printed in a glow-in-the-dark PLA, so they will diffuse the light a little bit. Soldered everything back together with my trusty tweezers, glued it all back up, and hit play. Now this puppy has been running for five days straight and the battery is regulating a steady supply of five volt DC power to the electric motor. The contacts and their lights flicker here and there, but honestly it grabs more attention from people walking by on the street. Thanks for watching. Let me know if there's any other projects you want us to get into and bring you behind the scenes on. Don't forget to subscribe and if you're in the Hamilton area, check us out at 162 Lock Street South or online at printandplay.ca.